Hi, I'm going to start with our high-level goal, which is understanding what leads to better conversations. Now, getting there requires us to address questions about how conversations work and make claims about how conversational behaviors can cause better outcomes. And so, in our paper, we formalize what it means to draw that causal relationship, and we also identify aspects of conversations that pose particular challenges and opportunities in establishing causal claims. We focus on a type of setting where we want, and perhaps can actually enact, better conversations, like counseling or customer service, where agents talk to clients, aiming for a goal like making them feel better. So how an agent behaves in a conversation really matters, and a platform that facilitates such conversations might try to foster better outcomes by encouraging certain behaviors through, say, training or selecting agents. Now, these policies don't have to come out of thin air. For instance, there's a lot of past research on mental health interactions, and maybe we can improve counseling in a data-driven way. Let's say our analysis tells us that in conversations that go better, for instance, according to a client's rating, the counselor uses more positive language. So maybe we should sign up more positive counselors. But perhaps these results are simply telling us that some counselors tend to end up with cases that are easier, where the clients are more open to receiving help, they're easier to be positive with, and they more readily give good ratings. That confound means we don't know if having more positive counselors would actually make a difference. As another example, counselors are more likely to say you're welcome in good conversations. Does this mean that we should tell counselors to say you're welcome more often? Well, perhaps that's just a response to thank you. So saying you're welcome is simply a signal that the conversation is already going pretty well. Which is to say, there's a gap between our observations and sensible policies. And a critical part of bridging this gap is establishing that conversational behaviors and outcomes are causally related. In a sensitive domain where running experiments is infeasible, we need to do this observationally. And so we analyze this problem more concretely, concretely for a particular type of policy, of assigning certain agents to take more conversations given what we've gleaned from their behaviors in past conversations, like a tendency for more positive language. And the underlying causal question here is, what's the effect of assigning an agent with a particular tendency to future conversations? Now, to precisely articulate what this question entails, we draw on the causal inference literature, and here I'll provide a high-level description of the technical ideas in the paper. Now, I've already given examples of problems we face when we try to estimate this effect, and we distill these examples into two key challenges that we must address. First, since we can't run a randomized experiment, agents aren't randomly assigned to conversations. And that's problematic because agents who systematically select, for instance, morning shifts, could also systematically experience easier cases and also happen to use more positive language. So that behavior and outcome might be spuriously correlated without being causally related. Now that's a problem whenever we deal with observational data and causal inference. But there's another issue that's particular to conversations, even if we do have random assignment, which is that conversations are interactive. That is, agents have to constantly respond to what the client says, and what we see the agent doing, like saying you're welcome, might simply signal a foregone conclusion. In our paper, we mathematically pinpoint how these challenges bias our estimates of the effects of a conversational behavior. And what this precision gives us is particular cases where these challenges can be addressed, as well as approaches to mitigate them in these settings. And so, under certain conditions, we can now make more careful causal inferences about what makes better conversations in terms of this policy of assigning agents. And we demonstrate this on a data set of conversations that exemplifies this type of setting and that we access while working with a crisis counseling service. By applying the methods we derived to address the challenges that we highlighted, we can go beyond correlations to probe whether assigning counselors based on past behaviors like using positive language, among others, actually has a causal effect on mental health outcomes. And in fact, subject to some details, we can estimate this effect. So right now, 88% of conversations with the service are rated as helpful, and per our methodology, implementing an assignment policy could increase that to 92%. So this policy might be worth another look. Now, stepping back, we got to this estimate by abstracting away a lot. And in practice, to have better conversations, we need to fill these abstractions back in and go beyond this one policy of assigning agents. Now, taking this richer view raises many other causal inference problems, which both inherit from and complicate our analysis. And for ideas to get started in this direction, I encourage you to check out our paper, and I'm happy to take questions.